have found our son, Jenna. I told you I would. Oh, thank God. Who is it? Sweetheart. Oh, my sweetheart. Oh, my sweetheart. Any bruises on him? Is he hurt in any way? Did he cry when you found him? No, no, he was fine. The second he saw me, he ran into my arm. Oh, oh. oh, I can't believe he did it. Thank you. <laughs> Abby, I can't stand this. Blake is not going to show up for this or any other meeting. Relax, Ross. It's early. No, it's her twisted logic. She thinks if she participates in these proceedings, she's uh, agreeing to the divorce, and she'll be damned if she does that. You told her what the process is, didn't you? Of course I did. I told her that she was dragging her feet. She's going to make the divorce that much worse. Maybe if the two of you talked again? Bryce, I can't talk to her. I hate this as much as she does. It's like a living hell for me. Maybe you ought to think about that. Maybe a divorce isn't the way to go. I'm here. I'm here to discuss the terms of our divorce. Joshua, what are you doing here? I'm not going to let you do it, Reba. We're no, we've already talked about us. it. It's no, I'm decided. not going to leave things the way they are. There's nothing more to talk not about. Not after what you said. I said what I said, and it's no. over now. I think we should no, move on. No, it's not over. It's not over, and I'm not going to put it... Annie, what are you doing here? Hi. Um, Reva took my old cameo. She was going to have it repaired, but it turned out that the jeweler couldn't do anything with it, so I just drop by to get it from her. Oh, well, that's, uh, that's, that's very nice. We actually did get something accomplished, though. It, it was about the same thing we were arguing about, my schedule with the kids. And we just, we've come to a more formal uh, arrangement so that there won't be any more mix-ups. Mix-ups? Well, yeah, you were right all along. I mean, this hasn't worked out the way we'd hoped it would. I mean, I've already missed two days with the kids this month. Well, you had good reason. I don't really think there's ever a good reason. I mean, they were upset, I was upset, not to mention the inconvenience to you and Annie, and I just, we've come up with this new schedule, and I'm gonna stick to it. I told her not to worry about it, but she's just concerned that she's been spending too much time at our place, so she's just going to spend more time here with the kids from now on. Yeah, I mean, you have your life, and you have your life with your family, and now that you have, you have this new baby coming along, it's just, you need your privacy, and it'll just be better if I'm not popping in and out of your home whenever I feel like it. Can't you see that, that you've got to agree that this is best for all of us? No. No, I don't agree at all. How can it possibly be better for the kids to not have their biological mother around? I'm not pulling out of their lives. That's not what I'm doing. Then what are you I'm doing? just trying not to be so intrusive in your life, in, in yours and Annie's lives. I, I'm going to see the kids as much as I always did. It's just that... Annie's going to be bringing them over here now. Thank you, Rita. That's right. I, we worked it all out. I just won't be coming to your house anymore. What, never? I just think it's best, don't you? I mean, I thought that we had agreed on no, this, we, Joshua. No, we haven't agreed on anything. In fact, this is sounding more like uh, your plan than my plan. Well, I've given it a lot of thought. Okay, and you think this is what's best for the kids? They'll adjust. Everyone will. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just expressing some concern here because... Because I think the kids uh, love you, really love you, and uh, they want to spend a lot of time with you. They love to be with you. Josh, are you just upset because we worked this out without you? No, I'm not upset. I'm just surprised. We That's just all. agreed that we were going to find a routine that suits everyone. So the two of you have worked all this out together? Yes. Uh, I mean, Reva and I haven't always been able to 
discuss sensitive issues, but we've turned over a new leaf, don't you agree? I sure hope so. I don't know what to say. Well, there's really nothing to say. Once I set my mind on something, there's no going back. And that's what I respect about you the most, Reva. It was great, Josh. Uh, we've never had such an open and honest and frank conversation. It, it was wonderful, and it wasn't just about the kids. It was about everything. And I hope it's just the first of many. Well, we'll just make sure it is. I'm just sorry it didn't happen sooner. I'm sorry, but I'm with a friend. I need right to talk now. to you. Well, this is not it's a good important. time. It's important. It's up to you. All right. I'll talk to you on the porch. Be right back. Sure. Anything. Well, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you with your date. Well, why don't you just say what you have to say you and know, let me go? You know, you're in a small place over there. I couldn't help but see you across the room. Well, that's bound to happen every so often. Cut it out. What are you doing? I'm having coffee with a friend, and if you're here to tell me that you don't like it, that I'm with another man... I don't give a damn about him. All I care about is you're not here with me. This is my attorney, Bryce Cannon, Blake Marler. Pleased to meet you. And her attorney, Griffin Williams. It's a pleasure. Same here. I thought you two were going to show up. Well, I wasn't at first, uh, but my attorney, the one you so graciously sent over to represent me, um, advised me that was the wrong way to go. Well, shall we get started? Why don't we sit over here? I knew if anybody could get through to Blake, it would be you. I'm sure this won't take long. Ross and I want the proceedings to be informal and friendly. Why make this any more difficult than it already is? We're filing a motion for a complete disclosure of your client's financial records. My financial records? Stocks, bonds, mutual funds, as far back as they go. Well, there's no reason to do that. I'm afraid there is, Ross. No, there's not. Blake knows my financial situation. I mean, better than I do. I turned my checks over to her, and she paid the bills in the house. She paid the bills even in this office, and she... Griffin, what is going on? Is this really necessary? My client and I agree that this is in her best interest. All it's going to do is cost you more time and money, Mrs. Marler. Your attorney just gets to tack on more billable hours. I trust you're not implying that I'm bilking my client. Are you? Our demands are non-negotiable. Okay. What possible reason do you have for this full disclosure? My client has reason to believe that Mr. Marler has funds secreted away. <laughs> that is so much hogwash. And Blake knows that. You know, I always wondered why Ross was taking so many trips to the Caribbean. And then I asked my lawyer, and he said that's where the money was stashed. What money? One time Ross made me carry a briefcase for him through customs. Now, it was uh, very heavy, although I did not say anything oh, at the time. Sake. Now I'm thinking that it might have contained a sizable amount of cash. I do not have any money, any sizable amount of cash, secreted away anywhere. And if I did, I would not be hauling it around in a briefcase on our vacation in the Caribbean. As you can see, there are obvious questions concerning the whereabouts of potentially large sums of money. Which, in fact, if they do exist, I plan to find them. You were right, Ross. Griffin is the perfect lawyer for me. He's, he's knowledgeable and he's thorough, and, and thank you for sending him over to me. And now, on to our second motion. you found him. <clears throat> well, I told you I wasn't going to come home without him. He means the world to me, Jen. I know he does. I never doubted that. Where did you find him? It was by the goldfish pond in the far corner of the park. Oh, 
by the water. Yeah, he was oh, heading no. right for it when I saw him. Oh, thank heavens you got there. Who knows what could have happened? Uh -huh. he, you know, he's, he's not afraid of anything. Awfully lucky the way things turned out, don't you think? Well, I'm just glad I was in the right place at the right time. By the pond. Yeah, I was about to leave the park. I've been scouring the park for hours, and then I had this thought. I started to, I started to whistle, you know, that little tune he likes, his favorite tune. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> right, I started to whistle there. Next thing I know, I heard this tiny little cry, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. My heart stopped. I turned around, and there he was. He came running into my arms as soon as he yeah, saw me. said that before. <laughs> Trying to say something, Cooper? Oh, no, nothing, nothing. I'm relieved he's back. It's just, you know, it is funny, though. I circled that pond three times. There are loads of cops out there searching the entire area. Nobody saw Coop. Well, maybe he was in the woods when they were out there. Well, I searched the woods, too. Well, they missed him, okay? Maybe he was, he was a lot of thick brush in there. Oh, that's a that's brush. Whatever, that's a good point. Maybe he's in the brush. Well, don't kick yourself, Cooper. No, I just thought I'd been damn thorough about it. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know either. I mean, you know, life marched right down into that pond, and there was trekking through all that muck. I mean, look at it. Look at it. That's, that's a mud bath. <laughs> uh, looks like you have to get yourself a new pair of shoes. Yeah, but look at your shoes, though. I mean, those shoes, they could pass a white glove test. My shoes? All right. Oh, but then I suppose you're kind of a clean kind of guy. I mean, you probably watched carefully where you walk and didn't, you know, walk in any places real soggy. Yeah. Me, yes. I just went, you know, straight for it. I mean, there I was, marching all around, stepping, not caring where I was. I mean, if I'd been like you, I just, I <laughs> wouldn't have ruined my shoes. You probably wouldn't have. Yeah, although, you know, when you come to think of it, I mean, what kind of, what kind of mind obsesses on keeping shoes clean when you're looking for a baby who's lost and might be drowning? As a matter of fact, Coop here looks awfully spiffy. Not a, not a, not a spot of mud on him. What are you saying? Hmm? Why are you making such a fuss? Why am I making such a fuss? What are you saying, Buzz? What's the point? The point is, don't you think it's awfully convenient that Jeffrey here waltzes in with my son? My son who looks nothing like a kid who supposedly is wandering around in the park for hours. Supposedly. And the point is, now he looks like a great big hero, but I don't think he is. I think it was a setup. I think you had Coop all along. In addition, we're asking that your client undergo a physical exam to ensure that he won't jeopardize the health of the children. Oh, for heck, I had a physical three months ago. You've not lived in that house for quite some time. Griffin, I don't know what Blake has told you, but I want you to stop this insanity, and I want you to stop it right now. Is a physical exam really necessary? Well, one of the boys recently had a spleen removed, which left him fairly susceptible to infection. Uh, we've obtained a doctor's letter to that effect. Letter from Dr. Rick? Oh, that was a low blow, Ross. So is this ambush you've set up for me. What do you mean, an ambush? I don't know what you're talking about. Do you know what he's talking about, Griffin? I've got no idea. Although people in divorce situations many times do become a bit paranoid. This is totally outrageous. Well, I quite agree. You should calm down. Do you think you can get your client to relax a bit so we can get on with this? We filed one other motion. Oh, I just thought of something, Griffin. Mm -hmm. Um, can, can Russ be cited for abandonment? What? Well, you did walk out on me and the boys without any formal arrangement. Yes, I walked out on you, as you so wrongly put it, so you could stay in the house and care for the boys without the trauma of moving. But you did leave me. Yes, I left you with a house. With cars, with bank accounts, and your names? Yes, I left you. I'd uh, watch what you say here, Ross. Well, look, in spite of what you did to me, I took care of you and those boys. You were never wanting for anything, were you? I really hate to say this, Ross, but I still had to wonder, week to week, whether or not you'd leave us totally in the lurch. It's obvious Blake has been forced to endure an enormous amount of pain and suffering. I've had my secretary prepare a copy of each of the motions. If anything's missing, let me know. Mr. Williams, may I have a word with you? Do you mind? No, not at all. It's obvious Russ needs a little time out. I'll just, um, I'll stay here and rack my brain, see if we missed anything. How can you be a 
party to this. Uh, a party to what? I asked you to help Blake in good faith. This is a mockery. On the contrary, Ross, we're very serious. I'm prepared to fight you on every point. This is a stall, Griffin. And I expected better from you. Bryce, Mr. Williams, may I have a moment alone to speak with Blake? Oh, I don't know about that, Ross. Are you sure we should speak without our attorneys present? It will be just fine. Well, isn't everything supposed to stay in the hands of our lawyers? I mean, like you said, so everything doesn't get worse. Five minutes is all I ask. What do you think? Whatever you want to do. I think it will be, uh, all right. She's never hit me before. I never hit her, but she sure as hell hit me. I'll be right here if you need me. You, all right? It's you. I haven't been able to get you out of my mind, okay? Especially since last night. What happened last night? In the park. You were in the park. I saw you in the park. But were you spying no, on I me? No, I wasn't spying on you. I was taking a walk, and your friend came up, so I, I left. I didn't say anything to you. Is that what you're here no, to tell no, me? No, I'm trying to tell you what I felt when I saw you, all right? You... You looked so beautiful, you took my breath away. Your eyes were sparkling and your hair was... Oh, it was like it was floating out in back of you, like, like waves of silk. It you was, don't know what you're saying I'm trying right to tell now. you what I feel, I Abby. I don't want to hear what you feel. We are not together anymore. Would you please just leave me alone? I can't do that. Rick! How can I do that? How can I look at you, the woman I love, the woman I still want to spend the rest of my life with, and now I want to be the man who's with an with her in there tonight. You are being so unfair. I have asked you, I have asked you not to interfere with I me know anymore, you and I, I meant know. it. Well, I'm sorry, okay? I can't, no. I told, wait. Then you I said to my, do it. You know what? I told myself to stay away from me, to give you space. A hundred times I said that to you, okay? But well, it didn't. You need to listen to well, yourself and do it. Well, it didn't work. I love you, and I can't imagine my life without you. Would you stop saying Abby, things like I that to me? Honey, stop it. I can't. Stop it. I will do whatever I, I can to win you. you back. I do not want to hear what you say. I will not let God, you shut me out of my life. right now. Look at me, damn it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know grabbing your wrist like that is like putting a hand over your mouth. No, but I don't know how else to get you to listen to me. Let go of me, then! I love you. I love you with all my heart, and that will never change. But you're turning your back on me. You hear that? It's beating inside your heart, Abby. I know it is. I can see it in your face. And you are not going to kill this love because of one lousy, stupid mistake that I made. I won't let you do it. What happened between Blake and me that one reckless night happened long before you and I even started dating. Now, come on, Abby, that shouldn't come between us. What we're going to share on our wedding night, nothing and no one can touch it. That is sacred between us. I don't want to hear one more word of this. Stop treating me like a fool, Rick. I am not doing that. Now, yes. Come on. Well, then you are treating me like I'm some porcelain doll. No. And that is worse. I think you're an incredibly strong woman, Abby. I think you can handle just about anything. Yes, I can. I can handle anything. In fact, I can handle exactly everything that happened between you and Blake. Well, that's great. That's wonderful. Well, but it has absolutely nothing to do with us. Don't you get that? I was raised on a farm, Rick. I know all about procreation. I know about sex. This is not about sex. It's not about you sleeping with another woman. It's about a, a bigger violation than that. It's about the strength of our relationship, not the sanctity of our bed. Right, Abby. We have problems in our relationship, okay? Pro because you, you were lying to me. But the truth has come out. We can make our relationship strong again. Well, it never should have been torn apart in the first place. Well, we place. can work on that. We can rebuild that trust again. Trust? How? You were, you were prepared to marry me without telling me about your son. I, I, I am paranoid. I, I'm afraid of what you haven't told me. I have told you everything. No. No. I can't talk to you about this anymore. 
You have not told me everything. I have told you everything, Abby. No. I swear, I have so I have given you everything inside and out. What? There's nothing. Yes, I have not shared anything more with any other person in my entire life than you. You, you swore that you were in love with me, Rick, and you were lying to me all of that time. I. What? Love is about two people coming together as one, and not just in bed, but with their hearts. And I thought that we had done that. But all that time, I was alone. Because there was this big wall of life between us that you built that I didn't even know about. Abby, I... how many times have I told you how sorry I am? I how many times? I don't care that you're sorry. How could you treat me like that? Because I was trying I to protect you. To... I don't need that kind of protection. All I'm asking is for a chance to prove myself again. Just give me that chance, Abby. It's time for you to stop playing games. What games are you talking about? By dragging this out, you are just making it more painful for everybody involved. Ross, you recommended that I hire Griffin so I would be protected. I'm just following your advice. If you think this is going to work, you are wrong. What is going to work? These legal maneuvers are not going to stop the divorce, so please don't do it. This is new territory for me, Ross. I am trying to protect myself and the boys. I mean, since now we're on our own. I'd like to be on my own, too, with a clean break, because it is over. Oh, just like that. Do you think I take this lightly? I honestly don't know. We built a life together on a foundation so strong, I thought it would last forever. But I saw it crumble. In an instant, our future was gone. And believe me, it is over. Whatever it is we had is now finished. Talking to Reva. Having this conversation has been great for me, Josh. I can't tell you. I feel so much better about things, like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders. Did you say something to Reva? Me? Yeah. Like what? Why are you looking at me like hey, that? This, 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 uh, this newfound friendship between the two of you it just comes out of nowhere. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, uh, I guess it did. In, in, in the past, you've always said that... Uh, that you have no use for Reva. Yeah, I know, I know. And and I admitted that to her. I did, but I think that sometimes we should just let bad feelings, just let them go. The three of us have had some pretty tough times. It would be impossible to pretend that that didn't happen, okay? But Reva and I have agreed that we should just be open and honest about things, and it'll make it a lot better. I mean, don't you agree? Yeah. Now, you and I can concentrate on us, and our baby for once. Won't that be nice? It'll be tremendous. Oh, honey, It'll be just great. It is going to be wonderful. I promise you. I'm, uh, I'm sorry about that. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, you know what? I'm already late for a PTA meeting at the school. I should really be getting going. I'm going to call you tomorrow. Excuse me, sweetheart. And, and finalize the, the plans that we have, the new schedule for the children, okay? Josh, you, you coming with me? Uh, you know what? We still have a couple things to talk about concerning the children, and I'm going to get to the office, so I'll, I'll catch up with you later, okay? Sure thing. Thanks, Annie. Thanks. Um, I just, I feel like this is going to be best for all of us. Yeah. Me too. abusing you and all these meaningless demands. I'm just following the advice of my counsel. I'm so sorry that I'm trying to protect myself and the boys and that you're put out. Stop treating this like some kind of joke. The last thing that this is is a joke. Your ludicrous behavior in there. There was no place in that for the... Oh, my behavior is outrageous. What? Ross, what about yours? Look. 
at what you're throwing away. Don't do that. Don't put this on me, because you are the one who threw our marriage away. When our marriage was in crisis, I did not handle it well, and I made a major monumental mistake, which I am willing to face now, but you are not. I'm busy facing what you did to me. I'm not going to make that mistake again, Ross. This time I'm going to fight for you. This time I am going to have faith in you, and I won't let you put blinders on. You're so determined to push this divorce through without thinking about any of the consequences. Without even trying to deal with it, you're just trying to run away from me as fast as you can. What other choice have you given me? Ross, you could stand back for a minute. You could take a breath, try to be objective, and see if we can make this marriage work. That's not an option. Never act in haste. That's what you tell your clients. Yet, you're doing exactly what you tell your clients not to Those do. Those are my clients. I'm doing what's right for me. A client cannot be objective. How many times have you told me that? This Bryce, whoever he is, he's really not looking out after you, Ross. Bryce knows exactly what I want. And believe me, we are not seeking your approval. I am asking you to have the decency to allow us to get on with our lives. Ross, that's exactly what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to prevent you from making the biggest mistake, the only way I know how to. I know I'm right in my heart. And if you would just stop long enough to listen to yours, you'd know it too. So I was whistling his favorite little tune, and as soon as he saw me, he ran right into my arms. <laughs> We've been searching all over here for hours. Well, I guess he's just too scared to come to a stranger, but his old dad is another story, huh? <laughs> Mr. Morgan, I'm glad you have your little boy back. <laughs> Cases like these don't always have happy endings. And I can't tell you how relieved I am this one does. <laughs> well, I'm going to call HQ. Tell him to call off the search. Thank you, officer. Please, you, thank you. Everybody who helped find my son. <laughs> Jeffrey, you know what I think I'm going to do? I'm going to take this story that you just told that officer, and I'm going to grind it up into large chunks of fertilizer and then spread it all over the state. Buzz, this is enough. Because it is a load of bull, and you know it. You... You shouldn't be talking like this. You should be thanking Jeffrey. I got a lot to say to Jeffrey, but thanking him isn't part of it. Would you please keep your voice down? Oh, come on, Jenna. Think about it. This isn't the first time he swiped the kid, used him as a bargaining chip to manipulate you. Come on. You know, you are really something. You should be so thankful that Coop is happy and well and back with us. Instead, you're raking Jeffrey over the coals. All right, Jenna. I don't blame him. I'm sure Buzz must be very upset. Right? You must be very guilty about what happened. Well, thank you for your concern, but, you know, I think I have this almost figured out. Oh, really? Yeah, I think old Jeffrey was hanging around outside the diner, hating the fact that Coop and I were getting along so well. Then Elena gets her hand burned, and he gets the brilliant idea that he can make things right between you two by grabbing him when my back is turned. Yeah, that is a horrible thing to say. It's okay. And, I know you're scared. I know you're scared. Look what you've done now. Me? Yes, you are making things work. Oh, come on. What better way? What better way could you possibly think of for him to get you back but to save your son? Would you stop it? And now look at him. There's Jeffrey over there. He's super daddy now. I mean, you're probably wondering whether you should end the marriage or not. Would you listen to yourself? How could Jeffrey go into the diner filled with customers and snatch Coop without anyone seeing? That I don't know yet. No, you don't know. But I do know him. He's an opportunist. I can't believe you're taking this at face value. Fifteen minutes ago, you were beside yourself because you thought you'd never see your son again. I was terrified that I'd never see my son again. This is your doing, your fault. Don't throw it off on Jeffrey. What the hell was that? I thought it was perfectly clear. Well, well, then you could explain it to me, because you know what? It's not clear to me. I just want things to be less complicated for you and Annie. Reva, don't you think it's a little late for that? It's never too late. No, okay, listen, uh, I, I thought we had agreed that we were going to be together after the baby's born. Things change. Y yes, you're right. Things do change, because I want to be together now. I don't want to wait anymore. Well, we settled that. that. That can't happen. No, no, we didn't settle it. 
You settled it. I said I didn't I buy don't it, and talk I still about don't. This well, anymore. you know what? It doesn't work that way, Reva. Now, come on, please. You can't tell me for six months that we are going to be uh, 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 always and forever, and then slam the door in my face. I'm sorry. That's not an answer. It, well, it has to be. Uh, is this because I hurt you? No. I mean, is this because I put you in an impossible situation, because I, I forced you to, to watch while I tried to have a relationship with Andy and you were all alone? Is that it? No, Be because, not Reba, it. if that is it, you got to know that that was killing me, too. And that's why I can't lie to Andy anymore. That's why I can't hurt you anymore. I, I, I just can't perpetuate this lie any further. If we're together, Joshua, there will always be lies between us, no. and we can't build a relationship on deception. No, our relationship is right. It's true, and it's real, and it's meant to be. I know that from the bottom of my heart, and so do you. Maybe once, but not anymore. What, 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 can, I ch what can I say to change your mind? There's nothing you can say. My mind is very clear Reba, on this. On. Now, this doesn't make any sense. You, you tell me that you can't love me anymore, and then I walk in here, and, and you and Annie are best friends. I, what's going on here? It's really not that what big a doing? mystery to it, you know? I mean, I just realized that I've been so wrapped up in what I want that I haven't even thought about Annie's lives or the lives, the other lives that are being affected by all this. No, you already knew that. Not to the extent that I know it now. But, but why now? Why, why are you pushing away from What else do you want me to say, Joshua? I'm trying to explain this the best way I know Reba, how. there's more to this than you're telling me. What is it exactly there that you're not saying? There is nothing more. There's nothing I'm not yeah, telling damn you. Damn it, Re Reba, you can't lie to me. You can't fool me. Tell me what it is. I've heard a word I have said to you. I have heard every single word. I have word. already made up my mind about well, this. Well, I'm gonna change your mind. No, you are not. Don't you know anything about me yet? I know a lot about you, Abby, and I want to learn a lot more, and I'm going to do that. I'm going to learn every complicated, wonderful detail about you. No, you're not. You have already had that chance. Well, I want another chance. This is a bump in the road for us, Abby. Can't you see that? We can get past this. I believe you just said it's a bump in the road. We, we don't even have a road. Well, we're going to have to have one, because you know what? I believe our paths cross for a reason. That day that medevac helicopter landed smack in the middle of your community, out in the middle of nowhere, that was so clearly for a reason. Yes, so that you could save a man's life. And something else happened, Abby, something that was just as much a miracle. Two people found each other. Two people found each other in this crazy, chaotic world. Two people that had absolutely nothing in common except that they believed in their hearts that they were good for each other and that they belonged together. The art gallery show starts at 8. If you want to make it, we should get going. Yes, I am ready to go. Good. I've got your coat. Thanks. Good night. talked out for today and I'm sorry that you don't believe me whatever it is we can handle it there's nothing to handle Reva please don't do this this is it Reva this is what we work for this is our time always can happen right now if you just let it always always it's always about us isn't it and to hell with everybody else haven't you learned? Haven't we learned anything here? Don't you think it's about time we grew up and realized that we can't just keep jerking people's lives yes, around like I this? I agree with you. Don't you want to live a life that you're proud of? Don't you want to know that you made the right choices? And, and don't you want to live a life that's happy? Yes, then I do want all those things. Then we have to tell Annie the truth. We have to grow up and, 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 and face it, Reva. We can't keep running away from the way we feel about each other. You're spinning fantasies, Joshua. We keep making grandiose statements about life and love, and we keep hurting people over and over again. And it's a long 
endless, horrible cycle. We love each other. It's not love. It's a fiction. It's a lie. It is not a lie. Our love transcends time. It, it, it transcended death. What other love do you know of that's like that? Huh? How, could, how could we possibly feel more than what we feel for each other? Someone has to say enough. I have to stop this before anyone gets hurt. Mara and Shane, before you and Annie and that unborn child get hurt. I have to stop this before I grow to hate you and everything that we did have together. Over, and these ploys are futile. I don't care how many times you say that. I, I won't accept it. I just won't. Well, you have to, because it's over, and I want you to forget it. Just simply forget it. forget that. Well, we're all tired. It's been a long day, so what do you say we go home and go to bed? What do you say, buckaroo? Sandman's waiting for you. Uh, but he doesn't know the Sandman yet. Well, we'll teach it to him. Oh, no, he barely knows you. You've only played with him. Oh, all right. Well, then you pick him up. Let's go home. No, not, not tonight. Excuse me? What? What? You would agree that uh, Coop has had a terrible ordeal today. <laughs> so... So, I'm going to go with Jeffrey back to the hotel. Am I hearing this right? Yes, you're hearing me exactly right. You're nuts. You're going to go back into the slammer. Well, I, you know... I I'm willing to take that risk. No, hey, look, I got your point here. You're angry at me, but no. don't risk the child. Buzz, it's not all about you. You okay? cannot go to the hotel with this man. Think about what I you're doing. I have thought about it, Buzz, all right? If the police want to find me, you tell them I'm with my kids. Come on, sweetheart. Hey, come on, baby kids. Oh, yes. Come on. Okay. I hate that you fell in love with her, but you did. So I tried to make her life a living hell. Rib Shane bit down like an Oklahoma junkyard dog and wouldn't let go. But now that's over. And I just want you to have the kind of life that you would have had if I hadn't have come back. I mean, it's time. It's time to just go on. We have to let go of the past. It's going to be hard, but can't you see? What I'm saying? Just go. Go and be with your wife. I heard every word you said. I don't believe a word of it. better than anybody else, right? Yeah, well, she's up to something, and, um, I'm gonna need your help to, uh, to figure out what it is.